What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another video and today we are gonna be building a Jamma board base system and all you need is five things to complete a Jamma board base bar top system. Now this might turn out to be a two part kind of video. First one, we're gonna talk about the Game Room Solutions bar top deluxe edition cabinet. Um, if you take a look back on my previous videos, I did make a HyperPie announcing the bar top edition to the game case arsenal. And I did say in the video that I bought the deluxe cabinet, but there's a lot of comments in the comment section saying that Vic, that is not the deluxe cabinet version. Um, but apparently I guess I was wrong. This one is the one straight off of his website, the deluxe cabinet, which came out to about 220 bucks. So we're gonna be looking at number one, the cabinet, we'll give a quick review off of it. Ryan from Game Room Solutions is an awesome guy. I message him, he might not know me personally, but we do message, you know, when I buy stuff but I get everything from him, from the cabinets, to the controllers, to the uh, joysticks, to the Zinmos and all that. I usually get all of my stuff from him. Um, this isn't a paid sponsorship. He didn't give this to me for free. I paid for my cabinet. I just like to give credit where credit is due. The second part, the main focus on this one is that we're gonna be building a bar top arcade cabinet with a Jamba board PCB kind of system in it. And you only really need five main things. And again, I have my five right here. The first thing you do need is the cabinet. That's number one, you need your housing, the cabinet. Number two, you need your arcade buttons and your wiring and all that. Number three is gonna be your arcade power supply. This right here feeds and powers up the PCB board. So you do need a arcade power supply and you do need your PCB. We are running a Pandora's Box 5S on this one that I'm gonna be building. Again, this has 1,299 games in it in one. And lastly, your TV. That's how we make it into five things. You only need five things. Cabinet, TV, power supply, PCB, and your wiring. Now I'm not gonna really tell you where to get everything from. I'm pretty sure it's common sense. But again, your RK power supply is a 12 volt, five volt kind of splitter. That, I mean, if you're gonna calculate the cost, we'll do it real quick. Figure 15 bucks on the uh, power supply. My cabinet ran for 220, um, free shipping from Game Room Solutions, that's awesome. 220 for the cabinet, again, this is the deluxe version. Um, the LED buttons came out to about 80 bucks. The PCB came out to about 70 to 80, depending on where you get it. And the TV came out to after taxes, I think it came out to like 80 bucks. So figure 80, 220, you're at 300 bucks. Figure 20 bucks for the power supply, you're at 320. Figure the Jamma board is another 80, so you're at 400, and then your RK buttons, you're at about 480. Figure 500 comfortably in total for just a Jamma board based system. Now, as far as talking about like the cabinet and all that, I bought two cabinets, I bought two of them. Um, one of them to be the black one, and I bought one to be a white one. So um, I'm excited to see it. Game Room Solutions gives you the option of either the black or the white. I never seen the white one, and well, I ordered it. So one cabinet's gonna have a Jamma board based system in it, and the other one we're gonna be doing a HyperPie, either HyperPie or HyperSpin build to it. I did get from Game Room Solutions the arcade buttons with the Zinmo, whereas the Jamma board one I went kind of off tangent and I got it from a secondhand person, secondhand dealer off of eBay. When you do do that, you gotta expect some hiccup, which I've experienced right now, and honestly, it's kind of a bummer, um, but that's just part of the learning process. Now again, I'm not gonna tell you where to get stuff, but I'm gonna tell you a couple of downsides and things that I experienced so far. Um, in the past, I've built about three cabinets with the Pandora's box in it. Um, Pandora's box 5S so far was the best one as far as running. I've never had any hiccups with it. Now me as a business standpoint, I obviously have to find it the cheapest way possible. So I bought this um, and I didn't get it from the normal guy I usually buy it from. And um, you know, this came out to about 10 bucks cheaper than I normally get. And you know, for me, I'd rather save money any way I can. So, you know, the one downside to me now switching a person and trying something is that when I got this in the mail, you know, it usually says Pandora's box 5S usually says on it, but the actual card on this one says Pandora game. And I'll be honest, I've never seen this. I've usually seen Pandora's box 5S. The booklet is a little bit different than what I'm used to. But right now with me trying to save 10 bucks, I'm a little nervous. I have yet to power this thing on. Um, I'm nervous, uh, you know, I've never seen a Pandora game booklet and you know, at least I do know it says $12.99 because on the listing there, you can see there it says $12.99. So again, I'm basing it right now. I'm looking at this. I just see the $12.99 label, but as of right now, I'm not too sure if I got a Pandora's box 5S. So the only way to see that is when I do power it up and get it installed. 
Um, everything else though is pretty normal, Best Buy, you got gaming solutions, you can't really mess up. Now, the only other thing that I experienced is that when I bought this, typically when I buy these things, the seller does give me everything, meaning, you know, I get sometimes, uh, you know, bundle kits that come with the speakers and the wires and, you know, the, the, the PCB and the power supply. Um, my only issue is that the main guy I usually get it from, they don't supply the Pandora's Box 5S yet. Um, they're still kind of in the old, like, Pandora Box 4, so I need to upgrade it. Um, the big thing, another downside, another killer to this is that this right here, in all honesty, I haven't tested this because I do not have the JAMA board connector. Um, I thought it was included and it wasn't. So now I have to wait another day because I have to order a separate JAMA board connector. Again, it's a big connector. It's a very big piece that goes right into this. And right now, I don't have any wiring to even power this thing up. Again, I bought two bar tops. We're making two systems. We're gonna be making one for the jammer and one off of either a hyperspin build or a hyperpie build. So really the game room solutions buttons are really for the hyperpie or the hyperspin build. For this build with the jammer board, I went and got another person, another seller that just sells the buttons. And again, this is another fail. Um, the person I bought the buttons from, it has LEDs. I'm gonna show you, I have the, the cabinets built. The buttons that I ordered from a second guy is like, you know, he has LED buttons, it's a chrome trim, it's almost great, but I only have 16 buttons. And the thing that annoys me is that he didn't give me the wiring to power up the LEDs. I looked carefully, I kind of just did it on a whim and I ordered it real quick. And sure enough, like even on the eBay listing, there's no wiring for the LEDs, so I'm actually arguing with the guy. Right now it's on the cabinet and you know, the guy wants pictures and I'll send him pictures, but right now, this is me right now trying to penny pinch, and I'm getting kicked in the ass. Um, again, I normally have, I, I normally buy a bundle kit, and if I have to spend an extra 80 bucks for the PCB, which again, my guy normally does the Pandora's Box 4, now it's at a 5S, so it's, you know, you gotta stick with the times, you gotta add more of the game, so I usually eat that cost, but now I'm actually spending more. The arcade, for example, the Jamma board based one, the arcade cabinet, that Ryan sends, it actually has this, the 12 player buttons, your coin and player one on the top, so you're at you're at 16 buttons on the top, but you also have the four interface buttons on the face, so you actually need 20 buttons. So me now ordering the arcade buttons separately from another guy, I only have 16 buttons, and I'll show you the cabinet. I have four that are empty. Luckily I have extra buttons, but with the Jamma board based system, they won't even work, they'll just be for show. Now I'm not going to show you how to build the cabinets, obviously you could do that someplace else. I already have the cabinets built so I'll take you into the little room that I have them in. Um, again, I did my research before and Ryan says you could put a 22 inch monitor inside the cabinet, which turns out again inside you could do 20, it's 20.5 20 inches of open space, open clearance inside the cabinet. And I went and I bought a 24 inch TV thinking maybe I could shave the inside of the cabinet and I think honestly just to be safe I'm not gonna do that so I went and stuck with the 19 inch TV um, so do your research beforehand I thought I could do a 24 inch I have the 24 inch but it's too big I have to literally shave off about an inch and a half in the cabinet and it's not worth it it's not worth me messing up the cabinet um, again I'm not gonna build the cabinet in front of you but we're gonna kind of go step by step we'll install it right now again I'm waiting on the PCB connector Again, this is a big connector that kind of takes all the wires and it's it's a connector. It's a controller if you think about it. It talks to the to the whole panel here, which is player one start, player two button, and then it goes into the power supply. And unfortunately, I had to buy that secondhand off of another eBay person or Amazon. I think I actually Amazon that for faster shipping. So I'm dealing with a lot of headaches right now with this specific build. Um, again, I try to go cheap because I do resell these things. And sure enough, you know, I'm so used to just one, two, three clicking. I didn't look carefully. I didn't notice that the Pandora's box didn't come with the JAMA board connector, which they normally don't, but I thought I read it. Um, for example, the power supply doesn't come with any wiring. So the only little extra cost you have to keep in mind is like you might have to buy an extension cord. You might have to cut the head of the extension cord. This way your power goes to it. So keep that in mind, but an extension cord is like five bucks. It shouldn't be that drastic. Um, and also I said the wirings and all that. I don't have wiring for the LED buttons, which doesn't make sense. I'm arguing with the seller. And um, again, I have the buttons on it. Let's take you into the back, let's show you the cabinets. So here's my little back room. Again, we have two cabinets. So I have the black one and I have the white one. The white one actually does look very nice. I'm very like intrigued by it. 
I feel like putting some red um, tea molding on it is going to really make it pop. But really the black one right here is um, going to be my hyper pie setup. I kind of even did a little bit of a custom thing. This again is just regular paper print. You kind of see the color transition from here. It's just kind of, you know, nobody pays extra for vinyl. I sell it just like this. If you want to put vinyl to it, you put vinyl to it. I sell it just like this. This right here is a little, this is going to be my marquee on the top. Um, these buttons are from Game Room Solutions. Um, LED buttons. I forgot to tell them I wanted the chrome trim on it, but I don't mind actually checking it out. So again, with Game Room Solutions, it gives you 20 buttons. So you got six, six is 12. You got your four up top is 16. And then you have your face buttons here, which is going to be my exit, my go. And these I'm actually going to put as a load and a save state so people can load, you know, a Super Nintendo game or anything. This one down here is going to be my Jammer board based system. This one, same kind of setup. This one I actually have it saying $12.99 in one, which is the Jammer board. And these again, I bought these arcade buttons off of another person. This actually has the chrome to it. So this is a chrome button. Same thing, but I only have here 14, 16 buttons. Um, and again, joysticks are pretty nice. The only downside to this though is that the guy didn't supply me with the power wire to power the LEDs. It, it's mind blowing. And I'm arguing with him, but I didn't read it right. Uh, again, we're going to be working on this cabinet today. We're going to be doing the jam board based system in that cabinet. So we're going to be doing a lot of the white cabinet. We're going to pull it out and we're going to make it, you know, visible on the video. So now again, we do have the Game Room Solutions Deluxe Cabinet. Um, again, I've experienced another type of cabinet, which in all honesty, I believe it's almost identical. It might be just a little bit bigger. Um, I do know the 19 inch screen TV that I'm putting in here is going to be a 17 and a half inch like width. Um, and again, it's 20 inches, 20 and a half inches wide on this one. So I think the first one I built, I think the width on it was like 19 inches so it didn't have that much of a gap i had to make a bezel for it on my old one uh on the other type but i'm pretty sure it's the same exact cabinet as far as width and dimensions the marquee is definitely a little bit bigger um so maybe the cabinet is taller i did notice that the the plexiglass on this is way bigger than the one i had before um other than that it's almost identical to the one that i per to the one i previously purchased um again this is going to be our jam board based system the arcade buttons, again, I bought off of a guy, and this is what I need you guys to understand. You'll learn it as you go. But I bought it off of a guy. I'm not gonna show the listing because I don't wanna give the guy props. But it was a listing really with a USB encoder in it. Um, really like you could run it as like um, a HyperPi setup. Um, you know, he has the encoders, he has the USBs. He does have like my buttons, you know, the, the wires that go to the buttons. But the main thing that he's missing is the power wire to the uh, to the LEDs. And I have here the one that Ryan gives you. And I have here the one that Ryan gives you from Game Room Solutions. It's literally a black and yellow, and it goes right to the LED button. So I have the buttons to make the, the, the buttons work, but for the LED, I don't have the wire. So now I had to spend an extra, I think 10 bucks, or actually no, the wire for that was like 15 bucks, because you want it pre-made, it has like the pre-daisy chain to it. I had to spend like an extra 10 bucks just on this wire alone. So I am going to be arguing with the company on that. Again, for you to advertise LED buttons, why not just include it? But again, that's something where you got to learn from your experience, I guess. Um, again, this is going to be pretty simple. I do like the door hinge on this. I'll take you to the back, but the door hinge on this is very nice. I kind of just threw all the pieces into it. <laughs> but the door hinge is very nice on this. I do like the door hinge system on this. Um, other than that, there's still enough room to put everything in it and your control panel flips up and down, which is very clean. That's what I love about it. And I do have enough gap to put, uh, to run a, a 16 2 wire. We are going to put an LED strip underneath it and we're going to be putting an LED strip in this one. Other than that, it's a solid cabinet. Um, every time this is anything with MDF, um, I don't blame Ryan for it, but you do get like the little nicks. I'm going to take you closer, but you do get the nicks. That's where like you have to really put a vinyl sticker over these things, but no matter what, even Ikea furniture, you're going to get the nicks and the blemishes and all that. Again, from my experience, no matter what, you're going to get the nicks. I don't complain. It's just, you know, regular. That's what you get with MDF. So, um, 
Other than that, I'm not really going to show you guys how to wire everything because I don't want to be responsible if you blow your house up. Um, you should be very familiar with at least power and voltage. But I will take you in the cabinet and we'll build it together. But in all honesty, that's all you need. You need your cabinets, you need your buttons, you need your TV to see it. You need your power supply for the PCB. The power supply is here, you need that. Whereas if you're running a HyperPi setup, you just gotta plug in the HyperPi and the TV. So it's two outlets. Even this, we need the power supply to be powered and the TV to be powered. So either way, you're gonna have two outlets. I normally put two plugs, like two plug outlets that you have in your house, two plug outlets I usually put in the back of the door. So whenever I do the bar tops, it's just an easy kind of thing. Because in the event you have to swap out the TV, we do kind of like it where you just kind of plug, unplug the TV and replug it. Some people, if you do know your power, you could cut the power to the TV and run it to this. I'm not a fan of doing that because again, if somebody needs to change the TV, instead of calling me, you could just do it on your own. Other than that, uh, let's get to it. Okay guys, when I tell you stress and something that's supposed to be a simple build, I'm in like shock. I can't tell if it's me. I'm not gonna blame anybody, I'm gonna blame myself, but damn, this cabinet right now is, is just driving me nuts. The big thing I have the issue right now is the, is the size of this TV. I did a 19 inch TV, and again, from the other cabinet I did, I used the same exact TV. I think I might've used a Samsung, but this is somewhere you gotta be careful, you gotta do the research. This TV sits out. The depth of this TV is 2.7 inches. I put this TV in, and all of a sudden I found out that the plexiglass, it's, it, it comes out of the TV. When I tell you we're doing some DIY stuff, we're doing some crazy stuff, uh, I literally took the back of the TV off. It's literally that deep, like that's how deep it is. I took it off and not only did I take it off, I had to take the control panel from the back of the TV and bring it around. I just can't believe like the stress that this one cabinet is doing and I bought the same exact TV for the other cabinet so now I'm going to be doing the same modification. Me also taking out this back piece no longer has like the vis the, the verse amount. I literally had it drilled directly into this, this, this TV. You can't really see it but I literally drilled into the framing of this TV. So that right there is the, is the actual heart of the TV. The speakers are still there, so that's all intact. We have our arcade control panel, and we have our Pandora's box. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys, but that is, I'll show you, I'll attach a picture of what the Jamma board wire looks like. Um, but essentially now, is where people get freaked out, is now wiring everything. On a positive note though, we do have a Pandora's box 5S. So that was a good breakthrough. There is a Pandora's box 5S in this. Uh, that was the biggest thing of my concern was that it said Pandora game. I never seen that, but we do have a Pandora's box 5S. So this is gonna take about another 20 to 30 minutes of just wiring and we should be up and running and ready to go. On a second thought, on a positive note though, I'll still take you around the cabinet and show you what it all looks like. Um, just for you guys, I did take out the Jamma board plug. I'm gonna flip the camera and I'll flip the microphone. So this is the back of the cabinet. I have a dedicated six foot extension cord, which is three wire. So there's a positive, a negative, and a ground. I have the power supply bolted into the cabinet. This is our Pandora's box. And just real quick, this is the plug that luckily came in today. So again, this right here goes on the side of the Pandora's box. And I can't really zoom in on it, but it does have everything from your powers, to each wire again tells you, okay, player one star, player two coin, player two button A, button B, and so on. The way I have this right now sitting is that the that connector goes on this side here, and then on this side here is easy access to, we're not doing a DVI. I have this to test the monitor, because when I did plug in the Pandora's box to HDMI directly, for some reason I was getting no video at all. So this is really just my test monitor, but Really the way it looks is that it's an HDMI wire and nothing else. There is an auxiliary wire if you did speakers, but we do not have any speakers in this. We're using the TV audio. Um, and then you also have your access to your settings menu. I'm gonna flip the cabin around to show you the stress that I was dealing with as far as the TV. So this, this, this build my, itself is kicking my butt. Uh, I'm not too sure. This is a, of course a Pandora's box 5S, so that's always a good sign. 
um, 130 pages. I'm guessing, I don't know, it's 10 games. It should be 12.99. So we look good there. My buttons aren't wired up yet, so we're gonna wire that next. But for some reason, I can't figure it out. This is the first time I've seen it, but apparently this specific JAMA board, and again, me not going with my regular guy, there's an HDMI wire and then there's a DVI like old school like computer monitor port so you could view it you know really by an 800 by 600 I don't know what it is about this board it's kicking my butt if I unplug the, if I take this DVI out right now right the game will still run it's still okay but if I try to reboot it which I'm gonna do now right I unplugged it everything's off I'm gonna reboot this and now for some reason everything's on the pandora's box is going to boot up the tv which i like about these tvs that it turns on by itself but the screen for pandora's box does not load it won't load this goes right into it normally right now it's, it should be loaded into a game right now i'm getting no signal now watch this i'm going to unplug this right and i'm going to put back this computer dvi just like that. Watch this. There must be a cross connection somewhere. But if I grab now, everything boots. Watch this. TV's gonna boot. This is what I like about this TV. It does boot by itself, so you don't need the remote. I'm not pressing anything. And Pandora's box. I never seen this. I guess I'm gonna have to let this cable sit inside of this, but it is mind blowing. This Pandora's box build is kicking my butt, but we're gonna make it work. As far as the unique thing that I did, which I don't really advise you to do, unless you know what you're doing, but I actually took, I actually cut the main power from the TV and I cut the plug out and I wired it right into the cabinet. I'm not gonna show you exactly how the wire is, but I basically cut the plug, I cut the plug off and now the TV boots with the one power supply. Last thing we're waiting on really is the LEDs for the buttons. But other than that, it's not too bad. One big thing, no matter where you go, a red joystick is always pink. I'm hoping the LED makes it very red, but it's always pink. I usually, I think on my next build, I'm gonna do blue and green. Maybe do a Mario and Luigi theme. But right now, again, this is a basic Jamma board build. Power supply, Jamma board, my modification to the TV. I'm gonna keep the TV and it's gonna look good. I'll make it look good, I promise. I'm gonna end it here, I'm gonna work more on the arcade and then I'll take another video of when the arcade is done.